Hello, and welcome to the Legacy Education ICD-10-CM Guideline Review Series. I am Tiffany Roach, the Coding Coach, and I will be walking through the ICD-10-CM guidelines with you. This video will cover chapter-specific guidelines for Chapter 6, Diseases of the Nervous System, that are represented by codes G00 through G99. This presentation is designed to review the ICD-10-CM guidelines that are effective for both fiscal year 2024 and 2025. There were no changes to the guidelines from fiscal year 2024 to 2025. When coding for hemiplegia and hemiparesis, you should identify whether the side affected is dominant or non-dominant. If the laterality is documented but not as specified as dominant or non-dominant, and the classification system does not indicate a default, then they should be coded as followed. For ambidextrous patients, then the default should be dominant. If the left side is affected, the default is non-dominant. If the right side is affected, your default is dominant. Codes in category G89 can be used in conjunction with codes from other chapters as long as they provide more detail about whether the pain is acute or chronic or neoplasm related, with a few exceptions. First, if the pain is not specified as acute or chronic, post-thoracotomy, post-procedural, or neoplasm related, then a code from category G89 should not be assigned. Next, if the underlying diagnosis or definitive diagnosis is known and the reason for the encounter is not for pain control or pain management, category G89 should not be used. If the encounter is for pain management, then you can use code G89. Lastly, when an admission or an encounter is for a procedure that is aimed at treating the underlying condition, the code for the underlying condition should be assigned and not a code from category G89. There are two instances that allow for a code from category G89 to be listed as primary or a first listed diagnosis. When pain control or pain management is the reason for the admission or the encounter, the first listed diagnosis will be G89 followed by the underlying cause of the pain if it's known. When the patient is admitted for the insertion of a neurostimulator for pain control, the appropriate pain control code should be listed first. When the admission or encounter is for a procedure that is aimed at treating the underlying condition and a neurostimulator is inserted for pain control during that same admission or encounter, then a code for the underlying condition should be sequenced first, followed by the appropriate pain code from category G89. When assigning codes from category G89 in conjunction with other chapters, you want to make sure that you only use a code from category G89 if it can provide additional detail that your other chapters do not. For example, if your code describes the site of pain, but it does not include information on whether that pain is acute or chronic, then a code from category G89 can be assigned. When coding with other chapters, be aware of the following circumstances for sequencing rules. If the encounter is for pain control or pain management, G89 should be listed first, followed by a code identifying the specific site of the pain. If the encounter is for any reason other than for pain management or pain control, and there is no definitive diagnosis available, you should assign the code for the specific site first, followed by a code from category G89. If you are coding for pain due to devices, implants, or grafts, you should see Chapter 19 guidelines for pain due to medical devices. If the post-thoracotomy or other post-op pain is not specified as acute or chronic, it should be coded to the acute form. Any routine or expected post-op pain immediately after a procedure should not be coded. If the postoperative pain is not associated with a specific post-op procedure complication, then you can assign a code from category G89. If the post-op pain is associated with a specific post-op complication, then you should assign a code from Chapter 19. If appropriate, a category G89 code can be assigned to identify acute or chronic pain. There is no time frame defining when pain becomes chronic. When the provider's documentation states that the pain is chronic, then you can assign a code from subcategory G89.2. When pain is documented as being related, 
associated with or due to cancer of any kind, code G89.3 should be used. If the reason for the encounter is for pain control or pain management, assign G89.3 first, followed by the underlying neoplasm code. When the admission or encounter is for management of the neoplasm and the pain is associated with that neoplasm is also documented, you will code first the neoplasm code followed by G89.3. When coding for central pain syndrome and chronic pain syndrome, the conditions must specifically be documented within the record in order to code for these conditions. As always, thank you for supporting us and make sure to stay tuned for new videos in our ICD-10-CM guideline review. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you can be in the know of our newest videos as they are released.